slide. So it is the second most populous country in Europe after Russia. Uh, next slide, Shruti. Okay, so Germany is situated between the Baltic and North Seas of the North and the Alps to the South. And in this picture, you can see the political map of the country. So there are 16 states of Germany, which are federated states of the Federated Republic Germany. So as I have told you earlier, Mama that I Germany went, shares... Mama went to France, France and Switzerland. Very good, Nessas. Please keep your mic muted. Don't interrupt. We will have a session at the end with you, okay? So by the time, please keep yourself Ma, muted. I can't see this. To the west, so Germany borders the Netherlands, Belgium, and Luxembourg. And to the southwest, it borders with France. So Germany shares its entire southern boundary with the Switzerland and Austria. In the south southeast, the border is with the Shays Republic. Next slide, Shruti. Uh, can yes. So now talking about the flag of the Germany, it is a tricolor which consists of three equal horizontal bands displaying the nation colors of Germany, that is black, red, and gold. So the people who were confusing it, it is not yellow, it is gold. The flag was first sighted in 1848 in the Gen German Confederation. And uh, it, the flag of the country symbolizes or represents the unity and the freedom of the people. Next slide. So now we will have a quick overview of the history of German. The concept of German as a distinct region in Central Europe can be traced to Roman commander Julius Caesar, who referred to the unconquered area east of Rhine as Germania, thus distinguishing it from Gaul, that is France, which he had conquered earlier. The victory of the Germanic tribes in the battle of the Tuberg Forest prevented annexation by the Roman Empire. Although the Roman provinces of Germania Superior and Germania Inferior were established along the Rhine. Next slide. Okay. Following the fall of the Western Roman Empire, the Franks conquered the other West Germanic tribes. When the Frankish Empire was divided among Charles of the Great here in 18, 843, the eastern part of became East Francia. In 962, Otto I became the first Holy Roman Emperor of the Holy Roman Empire, the medieval German state. So by 1900, Germany was the dominant power on the European continent. And its rapidly expanding industry has surpassed Britain while provoking it in a naval arm race. So Germany led the central powers in World War I against France, Great Britain, Russia, and the United States. So it defeated and partly occupied Germany was forced to pay war reparations by the Treaty of Versailles and was stripped of its colonies as well as the home territories to be ceded to Belgium, France, and Poland and was banned from uniting with German settled regions of Austria. Uh, oh, yes. Is there someone? Who... Okay. So the German Revolution of 1918 to 1919 put an end to the federal constitutional monarchy which result in the establishment of the Weimar Republic that is an unstable unemployment sore 
and people lost confidence in the government. So, who all know about the Adolf Hitler? Anybody have heard about him? Ma'am, Kiona, ma'am. Adolf Hitler was born in Germany. No, he was not born, born in Germany. He was born in Austria. Yes. 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 Ma'am, I was born in उसको अपने में कहाँ रखना वो तो बहुत दूर है, मैम। Yes. Even I know that that uh I also said it law also was to was a worst man in the world. Yes, because he had a dictatorship rule over his country. Place. Yeah. He was from a north. Yes. He, he led the political party named Nazi, and his rule was known as. Like most dominating person he was. Okay, so next slide, Shruti. He is. Okay, so the area of Germany it covers along three lakh forty eight thousand five hundred and sixty kilometers square. so it is a huge land area which germany occupies in the central europe next slide okay so capital as you all guys are so smart and you have already known so berlin is the capital of the german and also if i talk about the largest capital so berlin is the largest capital Next slide. So the Berlin, the largest city, it covers the area of eight hundred ninety one point eight kilometers square. Next. Um. Okay. Um. Yes. And Berlin is the largest city in the world, or in Germany. उटेड So now proceeding with the language. So the official language of Germany is German, with over ninety-five. Okay, please. 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 So, talking about the other minority language that includes Serbian, which is spoken by only zero point zero nine percent in the east of the Germany, and North Frisian spoken in North Friesland by around ten thousand people. So, that in percent is zero point zero one percent, and those who also speak German. Okay, next slide. now we will talk about the government which i earlier mentioned that germany has a federal republic government next okay so somebody earlier told me about this person frank paul testin mayor so that person told me that he is pm no he is the president of the country and talking about the chancellor angela merkel is the chancellor of germany ma'am then who is vice chancellor okay so talking about the population of the country for the year 2021 the current numbers update it about 83.29 million So this number makes the Germany place the second most dense populated country, as first goes to the Russia. 
नेक्स्ट ओके सो करेंसी आई गेस एवरीबॉडी नोज दैट यूरो इज द करेंसी ऑफ दिस प्लेस नेक्स्ट नेशनल स्पोर्ट सो फुटबॉल और सॉकर इज नोन इन जर्मनी इट इज हाईली और ह्यूजली पॉपुलर इन ऑल स्पॉर्ट ऑफ द कंट्री एंड कैन कैन बी कंसिडर्ड एज अ नेशनल स्पोर्ट एंड टेलिंग अबाउट द फैक्ट इवन फोर्टी मिलियन पीपल दैट ऑलमोस्ट हाफ ऑफ द पॉपुलेशन आर द मेंबर ऑफ स्पोर्टिंग क्लब और ऑर्गेनाइजेशन सो इट इज मोस्ट लव play that game that is played in the german now we will talk about the climate or weather type of the country okay so weather in germany it it has four distinct seasons like just in india so but it can be unpredictable like the country has a cool or temperate climate zone with like humid westerly winds and in general just summers are warm and winters are cold and the shoulder seasons of spring and fall often and have really the best weather at the place so germany is favored with a generally temperate climate especially in view of its northerly latitude and distance of the larger portion of its territory from the warming influence in the north atlantic current extremely high temperature in summer and deep prolonged frost in winter are rare next slide okay so now we are going you to take to the beautiful place german so i request all my guests to keep their mics muted and enjoy this beautiful video which we are going to present just in a few minutes excuse me miss yes nakshita Man, we can't hear. This is in the. So here's my Germany top ten. Germany is home to some of the world's most stunning landscapes, from endless castles, medieval towns straight out of a fairy tale, and the towering Bavarian Alps. Germany has so much to offer. Let's start this video off in the magical village of Rottenburg. Now when you go to Rottenburg, you'll feel like you're walking in a fantasy movie. It's one of the most preserved medieval old towns in all of Europe. During the Middle Ages, Rottenburg thrived as it was located at the crossroads of European trade routes. At the beginning of the 15th century, it rose to becoming the second largest city in all of Germany. But during the 17th century, Rottenburg faced adversities such as the Thirty Year War and the Bubonic Plague. Without much resources, Rottenburg's growth was halted, which aided in keeping the town preserved in its medieval state. Today, Rottenburg maintains its medieval charm, and it's been the inspiration for sets of Disney. movies such as Pinocchio. If you go, you can check out the famous Plonian Corner or witness the beautiful Christmas markets. I mean, just hard to beat the allure of this German village. From Rottenburg, you can make the three-hour drive to the beautiful city of Munich, also known as Bavaria's capital. Munich is located in the south of Germany, about 50 kilometers from the Alps. During World War II, Munich was heavily bombed by over 70 air raids, but today the city is restored to its former beauty. One of the most popular spots is the Marienplatz, Central Square. You'll find the new town hall with its stunning clock tower and historical figurines. After exploring Munich, we're going to head to the Alps to visit Berchtesgaden. Now I have to say this may be one of the most beautiful towns in all of Germany. It's just a two hours drive from Munich, and it's nestled in the Bavarian Alps. One of my favorite features of the town is the Watzmann Mountain. It has these uniquely shaped peaks that tower over the town. It almost looks like someone took a bite out of it. There's so many beautiful churches around Berchtesgaden to explore, such as the Maria Gern Church. 
which offers a perfect view of the Watzmann Peaks. Just south of the town is where Hitler's former Eagle's Nest retreat is located. It's now a restaurant with unbelievable views. The area is full of stunning alpine lakes such as Hintersee, which offers just incredible views. You could also visit the Berchtesgaden National Park and explore all its hidden treasures. I mean, the whole area is just pure paradise. Now after we're going to visit Lake Constance. Now it's this massive lake that's not only in Germany, but also borders Austria and Switzerland. I remember I was hiking in the mountains of Appenzell, Switzerland, and I can see the lake from where I was at. I mean, just huge. Now it's the second largest lake in all of Europe by volume. Now one scenic place on the lake is this town called Lindau. Now what makes it so unique is that it's this island. Now it was first mentioned by a monk in the 9th century, and during medieval times, it became quite the fortified city. Today, it's a popular place to visit. I just love the harbor and just the fact that it's an island. I mean, just such a cool place. Another picturesque city on Lake Constance is Mearsburg. It's located right on the shores and it's a historical town lined with beautiful colored houses. I, mean, I just can't think of a better place to go during a warm German summer. After it, we're going to visit the Hohenzollern Castle. Now I have to say this is one of the most impressive castles in all of Germany. It sits perfectly on Mount Hohenzollern and can be seen from miles away. Hohenzollern is the last of three castles that was built upon this hill. It was completed in 1867 as a memorial to the Prussian royal family. Today it's one of Germany's most visited castles and I understand why. Another stunning castle in Germany is the Kohem Castle. The original castle was built back in the 1100s and it made its money by collecting shipping tools on passing ships down on the river. Sadly, it was destroyed in 1689 by the French, but in 1868, a wealthy businessman from Berlin decided to rebuild the castle ruins. Today, it stands perched on a hill overlooking the beautiful town of Kohem and the Moselle River. Another stunning castle just 30 minutes away is the Elts Castle. It's a popular place to get that classic Instagram picture. So if you're in the area, you gotta check both these castles out. You won't regret it. After, we're going to visit the capital city of Berlin. Now today, Berlin is a thriving capital with a population of over 3.6 million people. It's an incredible city with a complicated history. Now Berlin was first documented in the 13th century. During World War II, it was the headquarters of Hitler's Third Reich and became the most heavily bombed city in history. After the war, Berlin was divided into the East and West Berlin. With the end of the Cold War, East and West Berlin were finally reunited in 1990. So one of my favorite spots is the Radenberg Gate. It's this 18th century neoclassical monument that is Germany's national symbol of unity and peace. You can also check out the Berlin Wall Memorial to see remnants of the historical wall. After Berlin, we're gonna head over to Hamburg. Located in northern Germany on the Elbe River, Hamburg is the second largest city in Germany after Berlin. Thanks to its access to the North Sea, Hamburg grew as the port city throughout the ages. Today it is Europe's third largest port. I just love all the canals that run through the city. Hamburg is home to 2,500 bridges, making it the city with the highest number of bridges in Europe. It reminds it's me of modern day Venice. A really impressive spot in the city is the Spikerstadt. It's the largest warehouse district in the world. Now another beautiful spot in the city is the Alster Lakes. It's a set of two artificial lakes that are often full of sailboats during the summertime. Now after Hamburg, we're going to head over to Frankfurt. Located in West Central Germany, Frankfurt is one of Europe's major financial hubs and it's home to the European Central Bank. It's full of beautiful skyscrapers and kind of reminds me of American cities. Aside from its skyscrapers and financial districts, Frankfurt is a beautiful historical town. One of the most popular places is Romerberg. It's a beautiful town square lined with colorful timber houses that will get your German vibes going. From Frankfurt, you can make the three hour drive to the Black Forest, now located right on the border of France. The Black Forest is a giant region famous for its dense vegetation, picturesque villages, and it's often associated with the Brothers Grimm fairy tales. Whenever I think of Germany, I just think of the Black Forest with its cuckoo clocks and just beautiful German towns. I mean, I can't think of a better place to road trip and experience the beauty of Southern Germany. I mean, just such a cool region. After, we're going to head to the beautiful town of Fussen. Now, located right at the foot of the Bavarian Alps, Fussen is a 700-year-old medieval city full of old world charm. Its streets are lined with cobblestones, and you feel like you're walking back in time as you explore it. I just love all the classical German houses, and I think it's so cool how the milky blue river Lech runs right next to the town. 
The crowning feature of Fussin is the High Castle. I mean, it just adds so much character to the town. If you really want to go back in time, I mean, you just got to give Fussin a visit. Now for our final destination, we're going to visit the iconic Neuschwanstein Castle. I have to say that it is the most beautiful castle in all Europe. It's what inspired Disney's Sleeping Beauty Castle. I mean, it's just the perfect place for a princess. Now the castle is nestled at the very tip of southern Germany. Neuschwanstein Castle is placed perfectly in the mountains with a phenomenal 360 view of the Bavarian Alps and the town below. The construction of the castle began in 1869. During World War II, the SS debated blowing up the castle to prevent it from falling into the enemy's hands, but thankfully it never happened. Today, the castle receives over 1.4 million visitors a year, so it's definitely a tourist hotspot. I mean, I just can't get over the beauty of this castle. It's something straight out of a fairy tale. Well, that is it for my Germany top 10. I mean, there's just so many beautiful places that I couldn't cover, so we'll have to do a part two. Let me know where your favorite place is in Germany in the comments below. I also started a relaxation channel where I post hour long films with calming music to bring some peace and nature in your life. I did one on Germany you might like. You can find me on TikTok and Instagram at Shirley.Films. I want yes, to mom. I might like, like the castles. I wonder I want to go over there, but I'll try to go. Yes, yes but good. these are really amazing to visit, right? Ma'am, it was good. I love the Germany. Okay. So now we will proceed with the Ma presentation. So my here, please. So we will talk about the food of the Germans. So Germans love their meats, especially roast. So some of the most common traditional meat dishes include roasted pork hook. So these are braised pork roast with cabbage and subretin. Another little traditional dish is sent. Well, I don't know how to pronounce this. Like this is a German term. Okay, so this is a way of preparing a meat which uses cutlet. So there is a wide variety of preparations of styling and sauces. So here we can see a few glimpses of the German type of food, which is literally delicious and mouth watering. So coming up to next. Now I will come on to the my favorite part and I'll talk about the airline industry. So can anybody guess the national airlines of German? Air Germany. No. Miss Lufthansa. Yes, absolutely right. It's Lufthansa. Lufthansa. So this is the Lufthansa group. German yes. Ma'am, can I tell something about German airline? Yes, Ma'am. Yes, Nisa, sure. Luft means air. In German language. Yes. yes, great. Very good. French, German, and the English teacher. Language. Guten Tag. Okay, so next. I want to tell something. Uh, can I have next slide? Okay. So Lufthansa is the largest German airline. So which when combined with its subsidiaries, it becomes the second largest airlines in the Europe in the terms of passenger carriage. So Lufthansa's registered office is in Cologne. The main operational base called Lufthansa Aviation Center is at Lufthansa's primary hub. Okay, so next. Okay, so besides its own services and on subsidiary passengers, airlines, it has the types with different airlines. So such are Austrian Airlines, Swiss International Airlines, Brussels Airlines, 
and euro wings which is referred to in english by lufthansa as a passenger airline group so lufthansa on several aviation related companies such as lufthansa technic and lsg sky ships as a part of lufthansa group so in total the group has over 700 aircraft can you imagine this number 700 aircraft which makes it one of the most largest airline fleets in the world so this company owns most of the aircraft from boeing as well as the airbus other than that company also owns some of the aircraft of junkers embraer and bombardier next slide okay so now we will have a close look to the lufthansa airline also i should mention you lufthansa airline have a most number of airplanes and other than that germany is also the hub for producing largest number of cars do you know that like millions of cars are produced average on a year and germany is the hub for produce, producing most number of cars in the world personal encounters Thirty million passengers put their trust in us. With one of the largest and most modern fleets in the world, they can reach more than 340 fascinating destinations worldwide via five European hubs or on countless direct flights. A route network that can satisfy any travel requirement with its numerous options for connections and combinations. At the same time. Our passengers can always expect great service and comfort during travel preparation at the airport and on board our flights. Practical apps make travel easier. For example, with mobile check-in and the mobile boarding pass. Our passengers enjoy Wi-Fi in more than 90 lounges worldwide. Excellent in-flight service, high-quality catering, e-journals, and internet on board many flights as well as a broad entertainment program whether they are traveling for business or pleasure we the lufthansa group airlines ensure our passengers enjoy a comfortable and relaxed flight to their destination austrian airlines with its hub in vienna is austria's national airline and makes a big impression with its exceptional service and austrian charm Lufthansa is Europe's first and only five-star airline. Frankfurt and Munich are the hubs for Germany's largest airline. Swiss has its hub in Zurich and a base in Geneva. The airline of Switzerland delights guests with typical Swiss products and services of exceptional quality. Brussels Airlines is Belgium's leading airline with its hub in Brussels and is expert in flights to Africa. Eurowings is one of Europe's leading point-to-point -point airlines, providing attractive, low-priced direct flights and one of the biggest route networks within Europe. Together, we offer our customers one of the world's strongest and most flexible airline networks. Because good connections always help. Lufthansa Group Airlines. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So Lufthansa is awarded as the best airlines in the world for 2021. So uh, as you all know that in 2021, 
Okay, so I will have your doubt session at the end. Keep your doubts noted. I will talk to you about at the end of the presentation, right? Okay, so proceeding with the presentation. So last year, like it was a full of uncertainties, right? Because of that COVID and the pandemic. So for the evening that showcases the airline that have successfully adapted to offer outstanding services to their customer in the face of global crisis using a unique 360 degree analysis of information from over 61,000 customers review and data from 667 airlines. So this year due to COVID-19, the Danza updated the best airlines in the world study. The top ranking go to those airlines that have provided unparalleled service not only on board their aircraft, but throughout each customer touch point, leading the way in flight runs, reliability, ticket flexibility, value for money, or overall experience and safety. Next slide. Okay, so here I have put a brief analysis of different airlines updated according to their scores. And their scores mention the ratings with respect to the refunds of the airline, reliability of the airline, the customer ratings, and the safety norms. So in this list, you can see Lufthansa comes on the ninth number. So it is not that bad number, like any airline providing such a good facilities and services to the passengers should be awarded. So if I talk about the first, so it is Qatar Airways, which is rated 4.40 out of 5. So this is really amazing services which are like being given by the airlines. And at the last, it comes the United Airlines. I want okay, to ask so, something. Yes, Rudra. Uh, uh, can you, can, can you I? Uh, the slide before? I can't hear you. I'm Subhita. Can I say a fact about Germany? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Uh, there are over 2,100 castles in uh, Germany. Yes. So you have some, you seen the glimpse of some castle in the videos also. Have you seen that? Yes, ma'am. The video which you played. Yes. Yes, ma'am, I saw it. Okay, so somebody was there with the painting. painting. Yes, miss. Yes. So can we have a look? Yes, ma'am, sure. Oh, so you have a wall of paintings like this is really good, amazing. Okay, so for tomorrow, we are going to visit Greece. Any pictures, ma'am? Okay, so I am assigning you some for tomorrow. Where will we go tomorrow? I am telling you, we are going to. We are going to visit Greece. U A E. U A E. Are you going? Oh yeah, we have the painting. Naval Memorial, ma'am. Yes, very good. Very good. Ma'am, there are also one thousand kinds of sausages in Germany. Yes, very well said. Okay, so tomorrow we are going to visit Greece. So I would request all my guests to come up with the very interesting facts of the place. Okay. And if anybody wants to paint about anything of the Greece is much more appreciated. 
so i hope the task is clear to all of you you have to come up with the can you yes. repeat what is the task so the task is you have to look for the different facts interesting facts of the country which ma'am you will be you will be to greece tomorrow ma'am will be go to greece tomorrow yes we are going to greece and you have to search about the different facts of the country okay ma'am ma you can tomorrow's country is uae no